It doesn't have to be as the prophecy says. John was shown a vision of what has been, is being, and will be. Now, in the latter trumpets, it sort of says, after these things, the people still cursed God and blasphemed. And so, you know, then the next thing happens, and, and it states it again that yet yeah, after all these things, people still curse God. And, da, da, da. and then more things. So you could say that this is what happens if the people continue to. Blame God for stuff. Now, although everything kind of so far has shown to be predicted correctly, like Wormwood being cholera and where that sits in the time scale and quite a lot of the other stuff as well which is in the video I did the book of Revelation decoded but it doesn't mean the rest has to turn out that way we could instead of blaming God for our hardships we could look closer to home try to figure out how we can rectify ourselves because the discomfort we experience is actually showing us where we need to make improvements. Therefore, we look towards ourselves and see our own issues and what automatically happens is you go, Oh my gosh, what an idiot I have been. I'm not going to continue that practice of idiocy anymore. And you're very glad that you've finally noticed the issue and you're quite happy about that that's basically repenting you've seen the error of your ways and then rather than blame God you thank God and you think gosh isn't God cool now Say we all repent tomorrow, then will these bad things still happen? No. Will stuff still happen? Yes. <laughs> There's still going to be something happening with the sun. And I'm guessing that's going to be in the latter part of the 20s <laughs> is that right? Yeah. the 20 hundreds um, but anyway you know, we're not all going to repent tomorrow it's not going to happen but I think there is a chance that we might even be able to avoid the woe of the fifth trumpet. Now that reminds me of the revelation 
and the point after the fourth trumpet where the eagle flies over and says, whoa, you know, what's, bad things have happened on this earth. You know, fourth trumpet, like the pinnacle of that was, you know, dropping the atom bomb, actually dropping it on the cities, you know, annihilating two cities. You know, that's pretty big woe. Um, so the eagle flies over, gosh, you know, what's what they've had to endure so far, but there's nothing to what's going to come in the next three, right? The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. <clears throat> so I think it's quite possible, and I'm thinking it's more and more likely now, <laughs> even just this moment, that God's plan is for us not to suffer such woes in the fifth and sixth and seventh. And in fact, we will start changing and people repenting and it will have the instrumental, what's it called? Anyway, exponential growth. So I'm really happy, actually. Because ever since I did the Book of Revelation work, I kind of resigned myself to thinking, you know, all right, there's not, there's not, not much to do um, in this present life of mine, and most of the action's probably going to be occurring in the next. Um, so that's, that's beginning to change. Anyway, I don't need, mean to sort of waffle on about that. <clears throat> I want to keep on the big issues. Uh, so I'm going to connect these up a bit. Now, so, we could repent and you know, would it mean that Babylon doesn't get annihilated? Well, maybe it just means that Babylon would cease to exist anyway. Like, Babylon would be left behind. People would turn their back on it, shake the dust of Babylon off their feet. Because probably the main thing... The main realisation, I've had many realisations over the last several years, but one of the main ones was the realisation that life would be so much easier and happier if everybody was happier. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It would be easy to be good if everybody was good, wouldn't it? It would it would be so much easier, like no one would get on your nerves, <laughs> and so it was that sort of realization of you know I know a lot of people say we need bad and you know in order to learn the the benefits of being good yes we need to have experienced some bad and I guess that's where we you know one of the emotions we're going through is, you know, new experiences. We've we've been capable of of new and deeper and bigger experiences, if you like. And that has brought with it the challenges. So you need to experience doing it wrong um, in order to to get it right. I mean, is it about the, the capacity of love that we can experience as humans is is greater than 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 when we were squirrels. Um, you know, think of well, I could think of friendships I've had in my life that I've I've really enjoyed. You know, just had such a lot of enjoyment from it, and then also how they can, you know, 
have relationships with the complete opposite. So, you know, the capacity for love brings with it also challenges because if there's more capacity for love, then perhaps there's more capacity for evil. And as we go on our journey of <laughs> more and more awareness, um, then these challenges will come up. So if we've been given more capabilities and than we had before, and if you like, the, the Book of Revelation vision was a warning to say, you know, this is how how bad it could go if 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 it if if you did go like full on um, evil bad, <laughs> if you took it to the extremes and the entire population were massively evil for a good period long period of time and I, I don't think it can happen like that I think part of God's plan you know wouldn't give us that much capacity if we weren't capable because I think you know how capable of evil is somebody um, I remember asking my Norwegian grandfather who um, was occupied during the Second World War. He was uh, an officer in the army at the time, so he was already in the army. And um, he got sent out to <laughs> stop the Germans coming in, but he made a decision not to fight. He surrendered, thinking, what's the point? They got tanks, we just got a few rifles. Just going to get people killed, make them angry, make them maybe harm the population. So... You know, he made that decision. Anyway, so I asked him, you know, was he, was Hitler evil? I don't know why I asked that. You know, it's just one of his thoughts on Hitler, I suppose. This is back when I was about 19, 20 or whatever. And he said, he said no, and I was quite surprised, you know. Anyway, so that just brings me on to <laughs> this other topic. I mean, it's not another topic, but it's about... What is one person's capability of evil? And I think, you know, I've made videos saying we're given the impression that there's people out there who are capable of huge amounts of evil. And, you know, I don't think we are. So God has given us this certain amount of capacity. And if someone becomes too evil, you know, the, the world around them, their universe will reflect back on them what they're putting out, and they wouldn't be able to handle it. They would only be able to handle uh, sort of being evil to a certain level. So with Hitler, you know, say, okay, well, he exterminated all those Jews. Um, you know, how evil is he? He was massively evil, okay? So, so here's the argument that he can't have been that evil. In that, okay, what, whatever he was doing, Germany at the time, you know, whatever their ideas was, he obviously wasn't the only one. He was a passionate speaker. He found himself in a place of position. However he got there, whoever was putting him in power, whoever was giving him the resources he needed, you know, that's up for speculation. We're just talking about Hitler. So, you know, he's in this position of power. He's building his war machine, he's got his plan, right? You know, war, they've done war before, right? So war's war. It seems to be, set, you know, seems to have be a separate thing in the past. You know, it's chivalrous, it's not evil, it's not murder when you kill someone on the battlefield. It's, this is how things have worked for thousands of years and, you know, just continuing on with it. Um, so the Germans have this um, belief, this ideology, this Aryan race thing, and um, they go forth to conquer, and for a while they do, looks like they do really well, um, you know, but um, then things don't go their way. And 
it's often said that Hitler, they thought he was making some crazy decisions. He, he They thought maybe he's going crazy, and that's probably what was happening. He was going crazy. So then, you know, but he's the one at the top, and it all works on, it all has worked on following orders from the top. You know, you don't question orders. The orders need to go quickly and swiftly without sort of being, you know, questioned all the time. So, you know, they were following the orders of a madman. And so the the atrocities, if you like, all, all those people killed, the karma for those atrocities will be spread out upon people following idiotic orders. And also, even the people themselves who had it inflicted upon them, you know, for not doing perhaps more to resist. Um, as a good friend of mine says, God helps those who help themselves. You know, you've got the guy on the island who stranded on a desert island, uh, devout religious, praying to God for help and everything, and a boat comes along and says, hey mate, do you want to, do you want to get in the boat? He says, no, it's alright, God's going to save me. Yeah, you know. And then he dies and goes home, and God, why didn't you save me? He did, I said, you're a your boat. In fact, 73 and you refused all. So anyway, you know, it's... That's a, a joke, obviously, but it's it's um it, it's a demonstration, you know, sort of like you know it seems that I don't know, maybe I'm getting the wrong impression. I don't know enough about it, but it seems that uh, the Jews in Germany just you know let let them be let themselves be walked all over. You know, and perhaps that was their type of temperament, which then does make me wonder how they don't seem to be the same today. They seem to be quite, you know, sort of aggressive, not meek. Anyway, that that's probably not needed to go into. Apart, I mean, I've made my views clear about what I consider the false Jews. They were... In 900 AD, they found themselves stuck between the the Muslims and the Christians. They wanted to trade with both, so maybe they had a few. Maybe they had a few, like, uh, because the Jews were scattered. If you believe the Bible, in the end of the Old Testament, the Jews were scattered, and they predicted to be scattered. So maybe they had a few there in the Uzbekistan area. I forget what it was called then. And so they took on this Jewish uh, uh, Jewish religion, which again, all three are Abrahamic, aren't they? Christianity and Muslims, all Abrahamic religions. So they could trade with both their neighbours and not get uh, into their feud, which was going on. And then in 1099, when the Crusades came, then these Jewish inverted commas people said oh yeah well we 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 should um come to that land and then they came to that land and stayed there you know all, all the time while it was palestine all the time up until uh 1948 when it was then invaded you know think about this is after the united nations which was put an end to a war they invaded you know it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to match up quite does it so that that well my argument for that is maybe uh, when the nazis could see they were going to lose the war the ones who weren't mentally ill <laughs> thought how can we get out of this well, let's starve ourselves and take the identities of some of these jewish people and we'll go just continue our life then that's a bit like mad james bond film type thing 
But, you know, interesting that the first thing the Germans did was basically to strip these people of any sort of identity, except the tattoo that they were given. So what, you know, what records do we have? What proof can be made? Um, But anyway, I, I didn't really need to go into that, because already even these Uzbeks, these so-called Jews, aren't even who they claim to be. <clears throat> because the Jewish people were Middle Eastern looking. Well, at least, if not more, because they weren't even native to those lands, were they? When they were given them, they'd been in Egypt. Where had they been before Egypt? Well, Abraham's lands, I don't know quite where they are, but they're probably Middle Eastern as well. Semitic. Semitic means of Jewish or Arab Arabic origin. You're not allowed to be anti-Semitic. I mean, that's, that's worse than racism. They, do, they are very loud about that, aren't they? Well, it's particularly in England, BBC mainly. Anyway, sort of drifting off the point. <laughs> I'll try and remain on the um, the bigger pictures here. We're all people. We're all people. But we have different DNA. And you can tell by somebody's haplo group. But it is also quite possible, and I have said this before, that the RB1 gene, because it was in the Jewish people, has been scattered and is in everybody. Now, it's very interesting with the RB1 gene because it has three different supposed origins. One is in North America with the Native Indian people. And I don't know if it's all of them, but in the Virginia area, I seem to remember. Another point is Central Africa. Central Africa. And another point is Western Europe. So this RB1 gene, anyway. So particularly now thinking that God's plan may be sooner than I was thinking. <laughs> <coughs> The RB1 gene is quite possibly in most people. Unless they, you know, pockets of uh, segregated peoples who who haven't been touched by um, people with the RB1 gene. But let's say 85% of the world's population have this an aspect they don't have to be full on RB1 they can only have just even had a smidgen of it right to get the the update so what would the update be the update would be more capacity for love and evil and dealing with that and what that shows Repenting, seeing our errors, and it's not an unpleasant thing to do, it's an awesome thing to do. And then I guess, you know, you do the big ones, and then it is a question of finding them. (laughs) But, yeah, your discomfort will show you. Where are you going wrong? And um, the way I've been doing it and continue to is I get real happy. I get loved up with a smoke of cannabis. I mean, before I was going without for two weeks and then having a strong one. And that was having not had any for two weeks. I was going really high. 
I haven't done that so much. I'm sort of more just floating about. <laughs> anyway, so I I get nice and high, I get nice and happy, and I sit there. I sit still, best on the floor. But you can work up to that if you want. You don't have to start there. And I um I sit still. And then you feel, feel the movements and sensations and all sorts. The, um, you know, it is, and yeah, I can't think of an end to the sensations that I could experience because they are, they've been so vast in their difference that there's different like the deep ones are the best like and the deep ones often involve a color like your inner color sort of thing it's just aware of it and, and there but there, is, there are so many and, and and most of the deepest ones are connected to feelings to my soulmate and obviously it's god and people, you know, and love, and it's all the good stuff. So it's these feelings that have given me faith in what I'm doing. And it's, um, it's just, yeah, it just, it grows and You know, it's not a constant thing. You have your blockages now and then and everything. And so what I was doing just before I started making this recording, I was considering whether whether all stumbling blocks ought to be removed at this time. And... I kept thinking, of course, yes, remove, why not? Why wouldn't we want to remove all the stumbling blocks at this time? And I just wanted to consider it properly, I guess. Or I felt like, was God saying that we shouldn't yet, you know? I guess these stumbling blocks may have been part of the reason, you know? this The stumbling blocks in order to make mistakes, in order that we would experience. Is it, is it a mean thing to do? I still say I'd rather have the experience of the negative early on. You know, get it out of the way. And you can always, you know, you always... Especially in this meditation, like, anything you do and it, you start to feel discomfort. I mean, suffering it is wrong, but jumping out of it too soon is also not correct. You know, I mean, you can suffer something for a while before it's actually that unpleasant, but enough to acknowledge, I don't like this. So you think, all right, I don't like this. I don't want to carry on doing this or I want it to change because when you're feeling sensations, you're not really, in a sense, you are in control, but stuff happens without without your doing it in a way. It's weird to explain. Like Then suddenly my ears just went funny, right? I didn't make that happen. I'm currently really experiencing my right ankle is on the floor, it's been on the floor, it feels hard. But I know how to deal with those already. You know, I have my ways. I understand when when it's hurting on my bum, it's one thing. And when it's hurting on my feet, it's another. Because it can move around and it can suddenly feel really soft and nice. And suddenly I can feel really connected. 
you know, this is just stuff you work out as you do it, and it will be different for everybody, so there's really no point writing a five-point plan, you just got to point someone to the gate, tell them how to open it, and then they walk their own path. They gotta kind of find the gate. They gotta seek. You gotta seek, and you can't make somebody seek. You can't. You tell them to look, and they're gonna look when they wanna look. And the world is changing. I mean, big time. It's it is coming to you know. Big shit's gotta go down. So, yesterday I was just still in the sort of, yep, we're going to have the fifth trumpet in 2033, sixth trumpet in 2090, seventh trumpet in 2128, and then, you know, then we'll be on the, on the uh, good road. <laughs> I guess I've kept thinking, God, is there going to be anyone left? And I said before, I think God wants to maintain the population that we've got. So, now, I'm thinking, well, you know, optimistically, we could even, um, we could even prevent the fifth trumpet. Maybe not prevent it, but I think we can prevent the fifth trumpet from affecting the majority. I heard a stat yesterday, I mean there were new express readers, but 67% said they would definitely not have the vaccine. That's, that's encouraging. I mean that's, that's a good majority there. Saying no. So optimistically, I think we could, we could have the majority of people saved, you know, from this, uh, this thing that will be tormenting people for five months, and they wish they were dead and stuff. It just made me think of something. The majority. Oh, it's gone. I mean, we're in a real information battle. Just sort of so much confusion. And the, you know, the media, sometimes I think, you know, is Trump and Boris actually good or have they almost asked the media to be so negative towards them because that brings the people closer to their cause, makes the people believe that they are good guys when... Trump could be a, a puppet for Saudi Arabia. Boris could just be a, a cloaked Remainer. And perhaps they're just very clever and they know how to... But... <laughs> when I was thinking that, it didn't make me feel right. So, um, I'm going to continue and have a bit of hope. But it is that, because I don't know them. You know, you ha you'd have to, I'd have to at least meet them, you know, in the flesh. 
or even write directly to them. But anyway, like I said, I'm optimistic. You got to be optimistic. Why be pessimistic? You can't always be optimistic about absolutely everything. That would be weird. <laughs> Is there a character or someone who's like that? <laughs> it gets annoying. Anyway, so with the other, just be yourself, in it. Whatever we are, that's part of our purpose is to learn more about what we actually are. You know, the full bit, not just this vessel in a real short life. Anyway, I need to mention love. The one love, living waters, as I've referred to it. Holy Spirit, that which you cannot sin against. Um, we're all connected by it. We're all fueled by it. And it, but it is what connects us all. But we are entities. Entities that will live on. We did have a beginning because we didn't exist at some point. We were born. We came into existence. And our awareness and our capacity for love was one. <laughs> I mean, as in just one, you know, 1.0. And we've been growing for four billion Earth years. And we've had, I guess, millions of lives experiencing stuff, experiencing more and more. And that's what we know. And, you know, I don't know if we will end. You know, going on forever is a bit of a head one. Because if our mother and father, God, sort of created us four billion years ago. And our physical presence is like another universe within the black holes at the centre of each galaxy. So that's how many children God has. All the spiral major galaxies. Don't count the little mini ones. And so in our universe, we've all got a universe. Well, perhaps we've got some stars in it already, I don't know. Perhaps there isn't any light yet in our universes. But you see the picture. Eventually we'll have galaxies. And then we'll have black holes. And that will be our children. So you and your soulmate are a universe. And at some point in the future, in about 10 billion years or something, you're going to have 100 billion children who, who haven't been aware yet. Who know nothing, just something that you made, you created in your growth. And how many times has that happened? So it gets pretty big and pretty sort of like blow your like your head would blow up if you tried to fit it in your head. That kind of happened to me I think in 2016. It's something I'd feared before. But it happened so quickly I didn't have time to. Uh, there was just this frequency going into my head. And went, <laughs> like pop. Luckily my head didn't explode. It was just a sensation. 
This is what you think sometimes when you meditate and you get in these sensations. You think it's happening to you. You know, I've had to sometimes look and check that I'm not on fire somewhere because it feels so hot in a certain place and stuff. You know, and that would be suffering. That would be doing it wrong. And I'm doing it wrong could also include um, not identifying it correctly. So like I said before, like if I feel a pain, pain in my feet, I need to allow a soulmate feeling. If I feel a pain in my bum, I need to allow a mother God feeling. That's what I've learned. And it works. So as long as it works for you, it works. And I get the, when things work, and and what I mean by work is, like, the pain or the suffering that you're feeling, or, yeah. and I move everything to the centre, right? So move, I want to move in my feet, then, you know, I want to feel it come all the way from the feet. That might sometimes jump a bit. And as it gets nearer the centre, the it's less painful, it's less acute, it's like a softer pain. But again, if you don't keep allowing it to go, it becomes a, like a, you know, a block, it feels like it's not moving. So when I mean work, I mean work, it flows into your centre and then out, and it's a beautiful, wonderful feeling. And afterwards, you're not left with the pain. Now, five minutes later, you could get some more pain, right? But you know now how to make it flow. You understand. And you might not do it the second time because now you're tired. You know, that we, you do get, you know, this can, you know, when you're doing this in the beginning, you get a big feeling, you can be exhausted for a good couple of days, three days even. So anyway, um... That's what I've been doing for several years. And it's not always working for me. I have good periods, I have bad periods. You know, I've been more, for about five years, I was very much dedicated to it. And I satisfied my curiosity, as I've said, but of course, I do, of course, want to keep learning, and I will. But I've been more occupied with... Um, with my son living here full time and stuff like that. So anyway, but it's all all kind of worked out perfectly. And here I am now, making this recording, thinking differently, thinking a lot more optimistically about the next several years. But it's going to be a challenge, 2031, 2033, more challenging for men, and the even numbers more challenging for women. But we've got some good times in between then. But it might, I might have to wait till then, until vindication, because I think I need some vindication, I need to... I really need to get some back in. I mean, you know, most most of the time I get the feeling, you know, it's more important about how my teeth look than than what I'm sharing. I was going to say this that. That I'm the best person in the world. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'll say it without laughing. I am the best person in the world. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the most intelligent. I'm not the closest to God. What I have done is I have taken on the most 
truth, the most fundamental truths. As far as I'm aware, if I came across someone that I considered had done more, I would say it. I do believe still that I am God's Christ, which is a current one. And there will always be one to come who is different from the current one and the one who was. And if I'm right in thinking that the the period lasts for about a thousand years, then over the period that we've been alive... I would be like the four millionth Christ. And perhaps what it is, is we're all different and it shows up in how we, how we develop, how we grow. What you were like on day one, for one of us, it was an ideal situation. They were, they took to it, and God needed, you know, that first one to make that first, like, development. That one of them was up for it. That needed to happen. And maybe God had no idea which one it would be. And then there needed to be a second one, and then a third one. And each time that's happened, there's been a moment where the whole universe, if you like, or the hundred billion, the future of a hundred billion universes was on the shoulders of that one. It was their moment to do the thing. And I had... A, a few, when I first came in, when this was first hitting me in 2014, uh, and probably on a couple of times over the next few years, I had some moments like that. And I think on one occasion, I do remember sort of just leaning out to other people in my mind. I needed to just think of other people, you know, I didn't like it, that was the thing, I didn't like being number one, because it, it was, I can't explain it, I just, you know, I was in this period where I felt there were these things I needed to do, and actually that's what I've been doing a bit of today. And feeling that there's this, maybe not final stumble, stumbling block, but a big one, a big fat stumbling block that's been there for all of us for a long time. And I get a feeling it's to do with the subjugation of women. That by doing that, we've We've burdened ourselves with a real stinker. And that stinker is the the result of subjugating women. The, 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 the comeback from it, the karma from it, you know. Women have a powerful manifestation power sort of thing. An ability that men don't have. Men like shine a light, whereas women... We make things happen with substance and subjugating them, holding them back, preventing them, putting them down, belittling them. You know, when they realize in the afterlife that that's what was done to them and it was wrong, they're going to be 
pissed off, aren't they? So, I was feeling this, there's a particular feeling that I've had a few times. It, it like, <coughs> it makes me feel like I'm an outline, like wafer, wafer thin, like I'm hardly anything at all. I'm only just barely gripping on to having a, a presence. Um, but I can still connect to my center and I can still connect to God and the one love. And I was, some of it was flowing through today. I need to get some more identify it more properly first because it also felt like a multitude oh, I could figure it felt almost like there was it was everybody like, and that's why I'm diminished because I'm just you know one the one <laughs> For the moment. No, when I was, so the one thing, the one is about the one love. So we're all, we're all connected to that. We can all say, I'm the one. And you can be speaking as the one love. We are all like that. If God spoke to any of us. You feel, when God interacts, you feel like you are the, the one there in God's presence. But that's what kind of happened to me to make me think that I was the Christ was I have these first couple of engagements with God being so high and learning to you know, receive love and respond with love and that was the first lesson to actually just be able to cope in that presence. And then there was a definite, like, as though God was leaning forward and pointing at me and saying, I want you to do something. So why me? You know, I'd been listening to A.J. Miller. He's the one who says he's Jesus, <laughs> right? And you, you can go and see the history of of how that went about on my Faithful Philosopher channel. Which there's a link to in my introduction video on this channel. And it, so the first time I, I, I couldn't, you know, figure, I mean, you know. And then a few months later, it sort of, I felt it strongly again. And the second time I thought, better tell someone because I've had this twice now and I know what I'm like. I'm going to start taking it seriously. So I told my mum and I was saying to her, I've got to tell Francis, my son. And she was, oh, but I'm done. <laughs> God, I'm done. <laughs> you know. And she's, you're not going to hurt anyone, are you? Know. Anyway, obviously concerned her. So then the third, so I put, and put it away again. So then the third time it happened, I decided to embrace it. And I had been feeling so rotten. I thought I was going to die. I was feeling pretty ill. And it wasn't seem to be going away. And I just said, oh, you know, sort of feel at that, at that thought, if this could kill me, sort of thing, and think, come on, I am the one. <laughs> and then I suddenly felt quite a bit better. And so I was thinking about it on the way home and stuff. I kind of decided, okay, I'll give it a go, I'll take this on. And then I went in the front garden and 
looked at my raspberry bush and there were two perfect raspberries and I haven't had any other raspberries there before or since so I took and ate them and I'd finished my shift I think I'd probably had some weed and then I went I think my This is 2015, so yeah, my dad had died already. So July the 8th, 2015. So I went, I went over to my mum and dad's house. There's nobody there. And then I could hear music playing. Did I know it was Bodfest? I must have done. Anyway. I, I can't remember because usually I'd only go over there to watch a Formula One. Because uh, not supposed to watch TV at my house because I haven't got a TV license. I didn't really watch anything else. So anyway, I was watching Formula One. Well, that was maybe why I was going. Over. Anyway, so I was sitting there, same day, still July the eighth, and. It was like they were throwing a party for me. I went over. I, maybe I didn't know I was going to go or anything. I don't know. Anyway, I ended up, I, so I went over there. And it was at the local pub. They're both pubs were playing music, and I went. I was going back and forth as they were playing, sort of playing alternately. I was in such a great mood, you know. I was dancing and everything. By the end of the night, I made made a friend and. And these girls coming up and going, thank you, for something, you know, just having a good time. Anyway, so that was the experience of embracing it. I thought that was, uh, you know, pretty cool. Oh, it was good. Good, wholesome, nothing nothing uh, bad at all. Anyway, we go on. Hang on. I've 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 dropped it, I've picked it up again, I've dropped it again, I've picked it up again. I guess that's probably how it will continue. Anyway. Ah getting cramp in my foot <laughs> oh. right, I think that's enough. Until next time. Can I shall I stop saying ciao for now? <laughs> it's a bit rubbish. I sorta of like it, so ciao for now.